வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பை மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹிவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் ஸ்கெலிட்டல் மசில்ஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆஃப் ஸ்கெலிட்டல் மசில்ஸ் மசில் ஃபைபர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹவு தே ஆர் அரேஞ்ச்ட் அண்ட் ஹவு பேஸ்ட் ஆன் கண்ட்ராக்ஷன் வி கேன் கிளாஸிஃபை டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் கண்ட்ராக்ஷன்ஸ் தட் ஹேப்பன் வித் இன் ஸ்கெலிட்டல் மசில்ஸ் வி ஆல்ரெடி ஸ்டார்ட் அண்ட் ஹேவிங் திஸ் கான்வர்சேஷன் about different types of uh, muscles based on the arrangement of fascicles or fibers within the muscle we said that if a muscle is having the spindle shape we said that if uh, in that case the fiber in the middle will have a length that is smaller than the fiber at the end and that makes sense it does not require Uh, much thought to agree or understand this why is that because this is having a curvature and this is not having a curvature so obviously this one uh, let's call this uh, fiber 1 and let's call this fiber 2 f2 when it is elongated will actually be that long for example it could be so it's slightly longer so that means the, depending on the arrangement of the fiber depending on where the particular fiber is located its length may vary but note that its attachment to the bones happen through tendons here and here there are only two tendons so all the force is transmitted through these tendons serially right so this is the case of the spindle shaped muscle or the fusiform muscle and this is what is shown typically when someone tries to explain a muscle some lay person is trying to model or uh, uh, trying to draw a muscle this is what they would draw and that makes sense because the most common muscle that they would uh, uh, come across would be of this type but we are going to be experts in this so we would like to understand more what are the other types of muscles we named some of the other types we said that that's parallel fibered muscles we said that they are pinnate muscles and we said these are convergent muscles and then there are these circular muscles we said all those things but here we only restrict our attention to pinnate muscles two types of pinnate muscles unipinnate muscle and bipinnate muscle but before we do that let us define some terminology an important measure of the force that is produced by a muscle and are an important determinant of the force that is produced by a muscle is its cross sectional area but when you say cross sectional area it is not clear what is cross sectional area which cross sectional area are you talking about is the question that comes many times why is that because there are two types of cross sectional area that can be there depending on the type of muscle let us look at what this is in a bit more detail now let's assume in this case there there is this uh, spindle shaped muscle and i am interested in finding the cross sectional area okay in general when you say cross sectional area of a muscle what you would say what you would do is that you would take the muscle and make a section so this is the muscle and i take a section and i look at that section let's say that this is the muscle and i make a section and i look at that uh, section and find its area that is a cross sectional area this is the cross sectional area that is taken for the muscle as a whole but not the fibers or their orientation immediately you are asking ha huh, can the orientation of the fibers be different within the muscle yes of course right that is what constitutes the pinnate muscles so if you are looking at fusiform muscles or more precisely if you are looking at parallel fibered muscles the cross sectional area of the fibers or cross sectional area that is found perpendicular to the direction of the fibers and the cross sectional area that you would find when you section the muscle itself will be the same right because fibers are not oriented in a direction that is different from the direction or the uh, the way the muscle itself proceeds right suppose i have a parallel fibered muscle 
let us say that the, the, the distance is something, some let us say you know 2 centimeters. This can be modeled as a cylinder with diameter 2 centimeter, then the radius is 1 centimeter. Then I could find, let us assume that this is a uniform cylinder. This is almost always never true, but we will assume this. If it is a uniform cylinder, then I can find the area of this uh, muzzle as pi r squared, is it not? r is 1 centimeter, so that is actually pi centimeter squared. That is the uh, area of this muzzle that we are discussing. Now, I would like to find the area that is perpendicular through the direction of the muscle fibers itself. So, the muscle fibers are traveling in this direction and I am making a section that is perpendicular to it. And if you look, that will also be pi centimeter squared. Why is that? Because the fibers are all aligned parallel to each other and parallel to the direction of the muscle itself. Because of this reason, the muscle fiber related uh, area will not be different from the muzzle related area, they will both be equal. Now, let us attach some names to this. Now, if I find the area of the muzzle slices cut perpendicular to the direction of the muzzle itself, muzzle as a whole, that is called as anatomical cross sectional area, ACSA means anatomical cross sectional area. Important distinction between anatomy and physiology. Anatomical cross sectional area means purely dependent on structure. Anatomy means purely we are interested in geometry, morphology, structure. Now, this does not necessarily include about how the muscle would function. We are not worried about function here. Here, I am taking a muscle and I am sectioning it in a direction that is perpendicular to the whole muscle, muscle as a whole without considering how the fibers are running within the muscle. This section is called as anatomical cross sectional area, purely dependent on structure. Now, if I take a cross section that is such that it is orthogonal to the long direction of all the fibers, all the fibers, the key word is all of all the fibers, then that means I will have to find how each of the fiber or any sets of fibers are going and find a cross sectional area and sum. This would not be different in the case of a the parallel fibered muscle as we have seen because the section that you are making for the muscle as a whole is the same as the section that you would be making for the set of fibers. It would not be different. It would be the same. So, physiological cross sectional area would be equal to the anatomical cross sectional area in parallel fibered muscle. This is a special case. Please remember this. This is a special case. This is not general, this is not the most general case. In the special case of the parallel fibered muscle, you will have the physiological cross sectional area, which is the area that is found orthogonal to the direction of all the muscle fibers and the area that is found by slicing the whole muscle as a whole will be equal. This is called, this is the special case of the parallel fibered muscle. But if you take the case of the pinnate muscles, you will have this situation. Now, this is the muscle, okay. that is the muscle. I am asked to find the area. I will make a slice like this here. Actually, of course, depending on where you are slicing, the area will change. I mean, for example, the area I have drawn it as if it is a perfect cylinder. It is not. It is more like a cone. Many muscles are more like a cone because they are convergent. We will assume that this is a cylinder, then what I would find is that this is the diameter of this cylinder and I would find area using this. This area that is found based on the 
diameter of the muzzle as a whole is the SESA, is it not? That is an anatomical cross sectional area. But because the fibers themselves are not parallel to the muzzle itself, in this case I am having an internal tendon. This is the internal tendon. You see, this is the internal tendon or the aponeurosis. This aponeurosis is where the individual fibers are attaching. And if I would like to find how the muscle fiber force is acting, we are talking about a functional aspect, right? Functions means physiology, structure means anatomy. In biomechanics, we are interested in studying structure and function relationships. We have said this previously, just reminding you one more time. We are interested in studying structure function relationships at multiple scales. This is biomechanics for you. So, I am interested in finding an area orthogonal to the long direction of all the fibers like this. This is the fiber and I am drawing a I am dropping a perpendicular to all these fibers. Now, I will find an area. This area is called as the physiological cross sectional area. And then I have a bipinnate muscle like this. I have two PCSs. I have one physiological cross sectional area for this orientation and I have one more physiological cross sectional area for that orientation. But the anatomical cross sectional area would be that would be the area that I would find by slicing using that horizontal line. This is the area that I would find, is it not? This is the difference between anatomical and physiological cross sectional area. Now, importantly, in the case of the pinnate muscles, a question comes, uh, which one would be greater? With some thinking, we are able to immediately understand that the physiological cross sectional area, especially in bipinnate or multipinnate muscles, are likely to be greater than the anatomical cross sectional area. Why is that? Because I can pack a large amount of fibers that are oriented at different angles in a multipinnate muscle. But they may all form a single muscle. So, if I am making a section of the muscle itself, the area might appear smaller. But because for each orientation, I will have to find separate cross sectional area, all these areas will keep adding up. So, the physiological or functional cross sectional area will be much greater than the anatomical or the structural cross sectional area. Now, how much greater? That is the question. Sometimes in multipinnate muscles, it turns out that the physiological cross sectional area can be as high as 8 times the anatomical cross section area that is a very large number. Take a few seconds and meditate on this. The area of the fibers depending on various orientations can be as high as 8 times more than the structure based or the anatomical cross section area. So, now we get a sense of why do we have penation itself? because we are interested in packing a large number of fibers in a given volume. If all our muscles were required to be parallel, then we will be huge. And because we do not have the luxury of space, we have penation. Because there is a need to pack a large number of fibers in a given volume, we have penation. But with this arrangement, there is this inefficiency that I am not able to convert all the muscle fiber force into the tendon force because I am always operating at an angle. We have seen this because in this case, this is an angle. This is an angle. Let us assume that uh, there are exactly two orientations in which this can, uh, these fibers are attaching to this bipinnate muscle. The one is this orientation and the other is this orientation. And within each of these orientations, all the other fibers are parallel. This is an idealization. This is not always true. Okay? I am idealizing that there are only two orientations in this case and I can find the theta. Now, that is the horizontal. I can find that theta. Actually, there can be two thetas obviously. So, I can. Now, I can draw this. Let me draw one fiber. 
one is at that length and the other one is like that for example. Now to this horizontal this is theta and to this horizontal that is some phi. Okay. These are the two angles there is theta and there is phi at which these fibers are attaching and let us assume all the other fibers are parallel, parallel to these two given fibers that we have taken. Now let us study what is happening. I am interested in the force felt by the tendon. I am not interested in what is the force that each of the fiber is producing. Actually we are interested in that also but at the end what makes a difference is what is felt here right this is where the external tendon is attaching or the tendon tendon is attaching tendon means external tendon but then what is these attachments this is the internal tendon or the aponeurosis right not Our interest is the force that is going to be felt at the bone. The force that is going to be felt at the bone is going to be a function of the force that is felt at the tendon, is it not? Tendon means external tendon. So what happens here of course contributes to what happens here. What happens at the fiber of course contributes to what happens at the external tendon, but it is not a straightforward analysis. Now let us take only one of these angles. I am going to try and analyze this theta, only one. I will assume that there is only one or we are analyzing this unipennate case for example and that is uh, and that is theta for example. Now force F is produced by the muscle fiber and that fiber is along its long axis, along the axis of the fiber itself, is it not? Because each fiber is producing force along its own axis like this. My interest is in finding the amount, the contribution of this force to this direction. Why is that? Because this is the internal tendon which is then going to attach to the external tendon which is then going to attach to the bone. So I am interested in this component of the force. I am interested in the vertical component of the force. We know from our early analysis on vectors we saw, suppose I am now resolving this force, right. In this right triangle I am going to call this as O and I am going to call this as A. In this right triangle sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse, is it not? That is AF by OF. The vertical component then is OF sin theta, but OF is the force F that is F sin theta. What is the maximum value that sin theta can take? That is 1. When would that be? When theta is at 90 degrees. That is, if this is the internal tendon and if this is the axis when theta is 90 degrees or in other words when it is a parallel fibered muscle when the internal tendon is parallel to the fiber you are going to have full force transmission when sin theta is 1. But almost always in all other values for of theta which is what you will see in the pennation case for all other values of theta you will have a case where sin theta is less than 1 that means that there is going to be an inefficiency and sometimes theta can be very low also that means that a lot of the force that is produced by the fiber is not along the direction of the internal tendon or the external tendon or the bone a lot of it is, is going to be wasted not exactly wasted but it is not exactly getting transmitted, right. So this angle plays a crucial role in force transmission. So this angle is called as a pennation angle and a given muscle ha can have many pennation angles depending on how many different pennations that it has. A bipennate muscle will have two pennation angles, a multi-pennate muscle can have many 
penetration angles depending on how many different orientations that these muscles are, these fibers are arranged in. Okay. Now, we move on to the next topic in this video, which is types of muscle contraction. Now, we saw different types of muscles based on the arrangement of fibers, fascicles, but the contraction itself can also happen in different types. So, importantly, when a muscle contracts, what it means? Contraction means its length reduces. So, this is a variation in length. And because there is a force length relationship, which is definitive, a definitive force length relationship exists, it turns out that for changes in length, you have some specific changes in force. When a muscle contracts without causing any change in the configuration of the bones that are involved, such a contraction is called as an isometric contraction. Iso means equal, metric means in length. Isometric contraction means a shortening, contraction means shortening, a shortening that happens without change in length. This is a very weird uh, statement. What do you mean by this? Because when I say contraction, it means shortening. And then I am saying the length does not change. How can length change without short shortening? Right? Because these two things refer to two different aspects. Contraction refers to contraction of the muscle. Muscle means the muscle belly itself. This contracts. And then there is the tendon here and there is a tendon here. Now, suppose there is a bone that is there. There are two bones to which this is attached. Let us call this uh, origin. Let us call this the insertion. Let us assume that it is having some length, say 10 centimeters. If the muscle contracts, but the distance between the bones themselves do not change, what could change? What are all the various lengths that are involved? This is the tendon length. L1, this is the muscle length L2, this is the muscle length, the other tendon length L3. What we know from this is that L1 plus L2 plus L3 is 10 centimeters and this does not change, it remains 10 centimeters. And what we do know is that L2 reduces, muscle contracts, that means that L2 reduces. Since L2 reduces, and since L1 plus L2 plus L3 remains constant at 10 centimeter, what you immediately realize either L1 or L3 or perhaps and more commonly both their length increases because tendon can change in length, tendons can deform as the muscle is contracting without changing a configuration at the bone level, at the skeleton level, force can still be produced by the muscle. This is a unique case of the isometric contraction. Iso means equal, metric means in length, contraction means shortening. This is the shortening that does not cause a change in length. Specifically, this is the shortening of the muscle that does not cause a change in length of the muscle plus tendon unit, the whole unit muscle plus the two tendons, the whole unit length does not change, but the muscle length alone changes. This is a unique case, the isometric contraction. When do you use this? We do this all the time. When I am holding an object, I can produce a force, but the configuration will not change. I can, that does not mean that I am not producing a force. I can produce a force without changing con configuration. We do this all the time. The other case is the case when you have an equal force being produced, isotonic contraction. Iso means equal. Tone is this misnomer that is referred here as the amount of tension, uh, the amount of force that is produced by the muscle. Isotonic contraction means the amount of tension that is found in the muscle. 
So, this isotonic means this amount of force that is found in the muscle does not change, only the force does not change, the length can and will change. So, in this case the muscle contracts, you see what is happening in the isometric contraction case, the muscle contracts here, the muscle length has reduced and the tendon has pulled up, right. No movement results, no change in the actual configuration. So, kinematics, when you are measuring geometry of motion, I will find no change. That does not mean that there is no change at the level of the muscle. At the level of the bones, there is no change. This is the case of the isometric contraction. In the case of the isotonic contraction, the tension that you feel or the force that you feel in the muscle remains a constant, but the configuration keeps changing. That is, when you perform slow, steady movements, for example that is called isotonic contraction and this comes in two flavors, concentric contraction and eccentric contraction or concentric means shortening contraction, eccentric means lengthening contraction. Again, these names are quite interesting because what do you mean by shortening contraction? Contraction means sh shortening, is it not? You would say, when you say contraction in general in English, when you say contraction, you are referring to a shortening. What do you mean a shortening contraction? This means that the movement of the muscle or the change in length of the muscle is along the expected lines. So, the muscle is moving or the bones are moving in a particular direction as per in line with the expectation of the contraction of the muscle based on the contraction of the muscle. So, the muscle is contracting, bones are moving as expected. That is called concentric contraction or shortening contraction. But the other case is when the muscle is contracting, but the bones are moving in the opposite direction and we are wondering can this even happen because you have a, a case in which the muscle is you know contracting, but the configuration is elongating. When can this even happen? This happens when the external load is much greater than what can be withstood by the muscle itself. This is the case. So, this is why when we refer to weird people, we call is an eccentric, she is an eccentric. We say this, no? eccentric means something that is outside the center, eccentric and something that is outside the center, something that is not along the expected lines. We say that person is an eccentric or an eccentric view, an opinion is an eccentric opinion, right? something that is weird, something that is unexpected the muscle is contracting and the bones are moving in opposite direction means the muscle is not able to overcome the load that is produced by the external uh, load. Uh, the muscle is not able to overcome the external load that is imposed on it. Because of this reason, even though the muscle itself is contracting, it is not able to change the configuration along the expected direction. Be because of this reason, this is called eccentric contraction. Okay. With this, we come to the end of this video. So, in this video, we saw the types of muscle fibers and the arrangement of fibers and penation, unipenate, bipenate, multipenate muscles and penation angle and how penation causes different effects on the physiological cross sectional area and anatomical cross sectional area and how force transmission efficiency varies as a function of penation. We saw different types of contractions, concentric, eccentric and we also saw isometric and uh, isotonic contractions. Thank you very much for your attention.